Right guys, so we're just gonna take a look at this plate loaded row here. So this hammer strength isolateral row is built a little bit differently to some of the other plate loaded rows that you might come across. Even within hammer strength itself, some of their other uh, plate loaded rows that you'll find mightn't necessarily be as effective as this one. So this is where you can start to put kind of some of that knowledge of, of basic exercise mechanics and the stuff we've been talking about as it relates to anatomy um, into practice when you're starting to look, about, look, at, look at exercise itself. So what you're gonna notice here is that on this machine in particular, the weights, the position of the plates, actually quite close um, to the joint or to the axis of the machine itself. So sometimes when you have a machine like this, you might have a straight arm that goes way out in front um, that's loading the actual weight itself and that's way out in front. So what can sometimes happen there is that the weight is actually, or the resistance is lower at the bottom because it's hanging down like this and then it's much greater at, that at the top because that arm is just kind of hanging straight out and you get this kind of experience on a plate loaded roll like that where the bottom is really, really easy and then the top is really, really hard. And if we think about like our basic kind of anatomy and mechanics, we kind of know already that we're gonna have more capacity uh, to move load when we're out in this position than we are in here. So those muscles are gonna have less capacity to produce force when they're in their fully shortened range. But there's also the case that the moment arm to the shoulder, as I move from here, to here is actually increasing. So as a result, regardless of the load that we're using, within the body itself, we already know that the challenge is going to be greater when we get into that, that fully shortened position. And so, if you're thinking about what a machine should look like, you know, in terms of giving the best experience to, to your client, you generally want it to be so that the resistance go is going to be a little bit greater when you're out in front, and it's gonna drop off a bit as you come to the top. And this machine does allow for that a little bit more than some of the other plate loaded row machines that you're using. So that's basically the result of the machine characteristics itself. So in general, if you're seeing that the weight is a bit closer to the axis, and also as the weight comes back this way, you can see that this part, so the handle, uh, and this half of the actual uh, loading part of it, that's starting to come back behind the axis. So as more and more and more of that comes back here, the resistance is going to be decreasing. So the resistance is very light there for me to pull that. It's a bit heavier there, a bit heavier there. And basically that's a, a part of the, the actual machine design itself. So there are just some of the reasons that you might have a different exercise experience or your client might have a different exercise experience when you start to use a machine like this. So I want Paddy to just do a couple of reps just so I can talk through some things. So what you're gonna see here is that he's sitting with the pad just below kind of the bottom of his chest. So generally that's gonna be a good position for your client in terms of setting this up properly. Because what we want to be able to see is that as Paddy pulls the weight back, that we got a more or less straight arm position. I'm not seeing any radial or ulnar deviation here at the wrist, so we're not seeing like straining of the wrists as he pulls in. We're seeing the shoulders in a you know nice comfortable position it seems. Shoulder blades are pinched back, arms are coming along the sides of the body, and he looks like he's relatively comfortable throughout that. So as he goes back out into the stretch position, Again, you'll see that the resistance, or he will feel that the resistance is, you know, it's, it's a little bit greater kind of down there and in the middle of the rep. And as you really begin to pull in, it does start to drop off just a little bit as this weight crosses over um, the actual axis. So a little bit of a drop off. So, you know, the thing you're obviously thinking now, you could put it down for a second, Patty. Um, the thing you're gonna be thinking as a trainer is, you know, if you're using this, and this type of equipment, or you're doing any other type of rowing variation, how you can start to modify the resistance for your client. And the reasons you might want to do that would be, you know, one, they might find that they, they have a tendency to fail really early. So if you're using a machine that gets really heavy at the top and you know that that's the position that you have less capacity to produce force, then when you get to that top position, that's more likely to be your limiting factor. So, you know, you could, you could feel like you have, you know, 15 reps in you going as far as, you know, there, but going from there to there, you can only get kind of six to eight reps. So if we use that point of concentric failure as the end point of the set, then we might necessarily be getting the same stimulus as someone who's using maybe a better designed machine. So these are the reasons that, you know, thinking about the exercises that you're using might be important uh, for you or your clients. So if I'm using a machine that's maybe less useful um, and, and I, I see my clients that they're kind of, they're having to cheat a lot as they get into the shortened range. You know, they might be kind of moving, moving their body a lot to use a bit of momentum or something 
swinging the weight or whatever, you know, that might be, that might be fine in some cases. You know, there's, there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. But if we're trying to be strict and we're trying to keep things constant, then what I can do for Paddy here is, as he does a couple of reps, I can start to use the art of spotting here. So, you know, Paddy's doing a couple of reps. He's starting to get a little bit fatigued and I might actually just start to help him into that shortened position. So just a little bit of help, you know, just as much as is needed, because I know that the challenge is, is a little bit greater there and he has a little bit more in him. Boom, just helping him out a little bit. So if you're using one of the machines then, that is really easy out here as he gets to the lengthened range, then what I might do is the opposite thing. So I help him into the shortened range where it's harder, and then I actually apply more resistance as he gets into that lengthened position. So I'm actually increasing the challenge there. So helping him here and going against him here, you know? So what we're doing there is we're actually modifying the resistance characteristics of the exercise through the art of spotting or the art of applying manual resistance. So you might want to think about, you know, how, how might that actually apply for, you know, different goals? So, you know, if, if Paddy's trying to maybe get more training of the muscles around the scapula, the scapular retractors, the upper back muscles. So if we think about where they're kind of be, going to be doing a lot of work in their stretch position, they're the main muscles that when you're out here in this position, they're handling most of the load because as your arm is straight, it's basically only pulling on the scapular thoracic joint. So it wants to pull the scapular thoracic joint into protraction. So if I can apply that resistance like I was there, pulling the weight back away from him, then I'm applying more resistance to that actual movement of protraction and retraction. And that's a novel way of starting to change the actual exercise that you're working with. So that exercise has very different resistance characteristics and stimulus to different muscles than it would if he was just to do the pure variation. So this isn't necessarily about better or worse. It's about knowing the tools that are at your disposal so that you can create you know, a better experience for your client, or it could be the case that you're trying to modify the points at which the resistance is greatest for someone who might have an injury, for example. So if your client uh, reports that when they get into the shortened position, you know, they, it's fine when the weights are lighter, but as they increase weights, they start to get a little bit of pain in and around the shoulder, then you're using your abilities as a coach to modify that resistance for them and hopefully then change that experience so that they can keep on training then, you know? So there's some of the things that you're at your disposal, guys. Of course, as I say in a lot of these videos, take this knowledge that's specific to this exercise and try to generalize it. So try to think about the principles that we discussed, the art of coaching, the art of using the spotting or the manual resistance and see how it can apply to other exercises as well.